Welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, Miss Lisa's YouTube channel where we talk about things that are science and math. And this is biology. We are going to talk about classification. And this is primarily designed for homeschoolers as a class. But if you like the way I explain things, you are more than welcome to join us. Uh, we're going through this book, Lincoln Biology and Everyday Experience. So there's homework in the description that tells you what you can do if you want to do this as a class. Um, so what we're talking today about is classification. So why do scientists classify things? And it's for several reasons. One is to put them in order so that you can find them. I mean, like if everything's, if you take all your books and you throw them in a big pile in the middle of your floor, you're not going to have a very easy time of finding the book you want to read or, or your shoes or whatever. I remember a youth group used to do a thing where all the kids would put their, or, or we did in my elementary school too. You'd put all your shoes in the, in the middle of the floor in a pile and then you had to run and find your shoes and put them on and then, like somebody, people would have the same looking shoe and they would uh, end up with someone else's shoes on. Uh, they probably don't do that with COVID right now. Um, one time when my kids were little, that we went to one of those McDonald's play places or Chick-fil-A where you put your little shoes, the little shoes go in cubbies. And we, my son had brand new, nice leather shoes that his grandmother had bought him. And he put his shoes in the cubby and he went and played. We, it was time to go. And I was like, Nathan, go get your shoes. He came back with, it was the same kind of shoe same size, but they were not brand new. They were beat up little shoes. But some other kid just thought, oh, these are my shoes. They look kind of like it. And I was just like, no, we've got someone else's shoes and they're gone with your good shoes. I can't believe it. So we organize things, shoes and cubbies and places and things like that so you can find them. But hopefully you get your shoes and not someone else's that are all messed up. That I wonder I always thought, did the mom even realize that that her son she suddenly turned new from old? <laughs> did she think it was a miracle? Or did she not even look? It was if it was me, I probably wouldn't have even noticed. But I noticed the dirty shoes. I didn't know I would I don't know that I would have noticed them being clean. It would just seem kind of normal. So um as you're looking through the book, uh it talks about that one way that we classify things are by traits. So we classify living organisms. Your book talks about the history of that. And you have a couple of labs. In lab 3-1, you're going to get some things and you're going to re, you're going to organize them and you're going to classify them. And I'm going to read to you what the teacher's edition suggests because you might not have the teacher's edition. Now, do you have to get exactly this? No. You can get something else, something similar. It even says it in the teacher's edition. But this is what they suggest that you classify a hairpin it's like a bobby pin something some some sort of hair deal a, a, a barrette or something like that a paper clip a toothpick um, a nail a button a washer a nut um, a bolt a brass fastener it's that thing that you that you stick it in your report and then go and open it up do you know what i'm talking about if you don't, you don't need to have it. But if you do, that's, that'd be a nice one to have. I don't think I have any of those. I have some notebooks that do that, but I don't have them just loose. So I, I, I would have had to substitute for that one. Um, it says a rubber band, two centimeters of yarn. So just a little piece of yarn that big. Um, a glass slide. So like that's easy to have if you have a microscope. If not, just get something else that's glass, something little in glass. Um, look around your house and see what you got. A seed, a key. Um, so if you don't have those things, just substitute something similar and you'll be able to do that lab that is found on page 49. All right. Um, the next thing, um, and it's like, why do we classify things as biologists? And it's because there are millions of living things that have been found and we have to have some way to find the information of the, the organism we're talking about. So you have to be able to look it up. Now, the first system of classification that um, your book talks about is one by Aristotle that was over 2,000 years ago. And he divided things into plants and animals. The plants were green and didn't move, and animals were not green usually and did move. And then he divided the animals into where they lived, um, either land, air, or water. And he made 
the plants into herbs, which I had a neighbor who used to call it herbs, um, shrubs and trees. And um, makes me think of, you want a shrubbery? Anyway, um, so that ended up being less and less useful. And so another guy came along, Linnaeus, and he made a new system of classification that is the roots of what we use today. So there are some great kids' books on Linnaeus, and he, he's an interesting fellow to read about. Um, his dad was into this, and that's why he has a name. It's the, it's the Linnaeus system of classification that we use, and he's pretty interesting if you want to find out more about a scientist. Um, he classified plants and animals, but he called them kingdoms. So there was plant kingdom and animal kingdom. It's based on traits, and he gave the organism scientific names based on Latin. And they would have a genus and a species, and that's what we still have today. So we'll talk more about that later in the chapter. So now our more modern system of classification you can find on page 54, and it's kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. And I always would forget one of them. I forget which one I always forget even. And then one of my students said, Miss Blackburn, this is how you do it. It's kings play chess on fine glass sets. Kings play chess on fine glass sets. So that, that's how you can remember them. Now, um, so... The biggest grouping is kingdoms, and then phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So family is like cats or horses or elephants. And then you have different types within that, um, which would be more the genus and species. And um, one way that you can kind of think about this is um, the, that there is not undisputed transitions from one family to another in evolution. So like we have, you know, what is believed to be the evolution of the horse. And you've got little horses and bigger horses and horses with some toes and <laughs> all kinds of horses, but they're all horses. They're all in the same family. We don't have fossil evidence that's undisputed showing horses changing into something else. So the, those family groups are the ones. And so, um, so that's what evolutionists are really looking for, is families changing into families, kinds changing into another kind. So um, and you're, as you read this chapter, um, uh, you will see that the scientists disagree. They disagree on evolutionary history. They disagree on how animals should be cl classified. And I guess you non-scientists would say that's why we're all so geeky is we argue about these things. One of the big arguments that I follow as a geeky scientist is the classification of guinea pigs. Right now, get because we had one, and I had never owned one. I've owned lots of different pets, but had never owned a guinea pig until a few years ago when my son got one. And they were he was just an amazing little creature. He would do tricks. He liked to sing. He, he just had a lot of personality. He was way smarter than I thought he would be. And I had owned rabbits before, and I had owned mice before. And um, a guinea pig are classified right now as a kind of rodent, um, like, like a rat or something. But there's a lot of debate in the scientific community that they should be reclassified as a kind of rabbit, and the rabbit with the, the chinchillas, the rabbits, and the guinea pigs. And this is why, this is the big argument about it, um, because the rodents are nocturnal, um, and the rodents can climb, and um, there's just all these traits that rodents have that guinea pigs don't have any of them. That, that 
um, guinea pigs are very much like rabbits. They're they're daytime creatures. They um just the the their the way their paws are. They they don't have the strength where they can climb like a squirrel or a rat or a mouse. They they aren't strong in their in their paws. And um another thing is, and this is a little gross, but this is biology class, is they um rabbits will eat their poop. Um, they're vegetarians, and they eat their poop to get more nutrients out of it. So when it passes through them the first time, it's still very much like grass and the vegetables they eat. Um, and guinea pigs do that too. Guinea pigs are also vegetarians, and they and so their diet is like a rabbit. They eat their poop like a rabbit. Um, it's been compared to like cows chewing their cud. You know how cows will eat? their food and then they pull it back up and they chew it some more and then they eat it again and it's because of their eating these these like grass like guinea pigs can eat grass too um that that it takes more chewing to get it digestible well guinea pigs and rabbits will poop it out but it still looks like kind of like little balls of grass and then they'll eat it again and get the the rest of the nutrients out of it. So I the the big thing that why guinea pigs are not classified like rabbits is rabbits have an extra set of teeth behind their teeth, and guinea pigs don't have that. But in every other way, um, guinea pigs are more like rabbits than they are like a rat. Just by far. So rats will eat anything. They're, they're gross. Um, guinea pigs are nice little vegetarians. They and, and so in South America, where they're from, they would keep them in the kitchen and they keep them under the sink or, or you know in a box. And um, they would turn all the vegetable scraps. You know, you've got some vegetables that are getting a little old. You throw them in there, and the guinea pigs eat them. You you cut the top off the carrot. You throw it in there. The guinea pig eats it. The the spots out of the, just any vegetable trash. They give it to the guinea pigs, and then they eat guinea pigs. I know, that grosses us out here in America, but they do. So for them, it's a way to turn vegetable scraps that you would never eat into protein, into meat. So um, they eat them. Uh, and I think they still do, that they still eat guinea pigs. Now, I have a friend from Colombia, and she was like, no, I would not eat a guinea pig. She, but she's like, but I know people who do. So, <laughs> so, uh, but, um, but she says no, that she wouldn't eat them, but that she kind of grew up uh, highfalutin and uh, maybe didn't eat everything that maybe the poorer people eat because uh, my friend uh, came where she had the ability for her and her family to just eat whatever they wanted to eat financially. So anyway, kind of interesting little thing about classification um, that is still debated. And um, there's definitely debate among um, uh, just about, yes, okay, so some of the people who do classification, they look at the traits and see which ones are more. Some people who do classification believe in evolution and they try to decide which animals are more related to other animals. And so um, that's very much debated because whenever you're looking at evolution, you're trying to speculate about the past and we don't know. We don't have a time machine. We can't go look. So, And we certainly don't have a time machine where we could see all of history of life. So it's debated, yeah, even among the scientists. So don't get the idea that the science is settled because it's not. Um, very much debate among the scientists. Okay, so the name of an organism is its genus and species. And so like we are homo sapiens, the homo and then the sapien, and you capitalize the genus and not the species. It's usually based on Latin. And we did this instead of regular names, um, popular names, because in different areas, um, different people will call, will have a name for something that's different or they'll have the same name and it's for different things. Um, I always remember one is, I, I loved the book as a girl, Anne of Green Gables, but I live in Georgia. And in Georgia, we have a plant that grows as a weed on the side of the road that's very pretty. And it's called Queen Anne's Lace. And it's white and lacy and very pretty. And I remember reading um, Anne of Green Gables and their Queen Anne's lace is purple. So it's something different than ours. Whatever they call Queen Anne's lace is not what we call it. So 
do you see how popular names can be different? And we will have more than one popular name for a plant too. Um, there's one that is called Impatience here. It's also called Patient Lucy, which is kind of funny because those seem like opposites. Um, so there's things like that too, where one plant can have more than one name. I have a plant called Campion that's this very pretty bright pink plant. It's also called Flower of Jove. See, so it has two popular names. Depending on what region you live in, you call it different things, but it has one scientific name. So that one scientific name, if you read it, you know what flower it's talking about. So just like how the periodic table of the elements is universal for scientists all over the world, these Latin names that we have are universal for scientists all over the world too. Nobody speaks Latin, so this is something that we can just all agree on. We're going to call it the Latin names. It's not after anybody, one group's language, and this is what we'll call it. Now, some, some of the newly discovered things, their names, they try to make it sound Latin-y, but they'll base it on whatever language the person who discovered it is. So you, know, you can find out about that. So you can read the classifications of some different organisms on page 57. They do the house cat and the lion, and they're exactly the same until it gets down to the genus and the species. Um, the, cat, the, the house cat is Felis cat. Cactus. I always have to say it slow, not say cactus. It's cactus, and the um the uh the lion is Panthera Leo. So those last two names are what make them different. Um. All right. So those are real interesting. Um. And you will notice on page 58, it says, similar body structures often show that living things have common ancestors. And if you believe in evolution, that's what you would believe. If you don't, you would say that, that it had a common designer. Um, so just know that these things that are about the past are disputed. And, and even among scientists who agree about the theory of evolution, they will disagree very passionately sometimes about exactly the way um, they think it happened. And so they get together and argue about it at conventions. So, um, uh, and, you, and that's a big point. This on the bottom of page 58, it says, for many years, scientists have debated about how to classify giant pa pandas. It could have been about dot, 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 an evolutionary path or about dot 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 guinea pigs or about giant pandas. So that's what these nerdy scientists do. We sit around and argue about classification of pandas. All right. Um, so that it talks more about the scientific name I already told you about on page 59 that it's genus and species. Um, and it talks about why we have a scientific name on page 60, which I already told you it's universal. It doesn't change. It's, it's more clear. And, um, okay, then the other thing is, is it talks about that when Linnaeus started the system of classification, there were just two, plants and animals. And, um, and now there's five, kind of. Okay, so your book says there's five, and it tells you what the five are. But let me tell you that I look at a lot of different biology books, and some of them now have more classifications, and some of them have classifications beyond kingdom where they group the kingdoms. So once again, it's debated upon. I would say the five kingdoms of classifications is not controversial. Everybody agrees that those are five different things. But the ones since, the ones that they've more added since maybe 2010, those are more controversial, and you will have one biology book that has does it one way, and another biology book that's been written by a different biology professor at a different university will do it slightly different. But if you didn't know these five kingdoms and you understand them, when you get to college, if it's a little bit different, you'll understand, oh yeah, they argue about this stuff, and they change it, and then they change it, and so... You know, it's all just kind of man-made stuff anyway, our system of classification. So because of that, it's going to change with time. So the five kingdoms are plant and animal that we've already talked about. Monera are um, one-celled organisms that are 
uh, bacteria and blue-green bacteria. They're also called cyanobacteria. Um, so, so the Monerans, you can just think of them like bacteria. Protist or, or single-celled organisms. So these are things like amoebas and paramecium. And we're going to do chapters on each of these. We're going to go way into detail of all of this. We're just introducing these concepts now. The next one is fungi or fungus. Um, uh, why did the mushroom get invited to the party? Because he's a fun guy. Ah! All right. We don't have many science jokes. And when we have them, we have to tell them. We just have to. Uh, so um, fungus or fungi are uh, the organisms that have cell walls like a plant, but they don't have chlorophyll. They don't make their own food. They get it from someone else. They get it from decaying leaves, things like that. They absorb food from their surroundings. So fungus are not plants because they don't have chlorophyll. They're not green. Then plants make their own food. Animals don't. And we will talk more about those characteristics. So you, there's a nice little picture on page 63 of the different things that are in the different kingdoms. And that's it for chapter three. So you read the chapter and do the homework that I'll put in the comments. Um, uh, it would be wise this week for you to do a test for chapter two, and I'll give you some ideas about how to do that in the comments. There's a Facebook group with tests, and, um, or you could just do part of the review at the back that doesn't have answers in the back um, as a test. You could just select some words and match them to the definitions, um, answer some of the questions, and that could be your test too. You, you know, if you're learning, Testing is to show if you're learning. And if you're learning, um, you just need enough tests to show that you have learned. So um, your parent, if you're doing this as a homeschool class, can figure out a way to test on this if you want to. Of course, there is a test book that goes with this book that your parent could order. It would have test questions and answers. I got mine off, I think, eBay for super cheap. It was really old and it was the written out version of a computer test bank and um, just super, super cheap. So it's out there if your parent wants to order a test book, um, that's the easiest thing because it's already got the answers in it too. All right, uh, math and science are great. Come back next time.